day three. We are heading out to the Canadian waters. We're gonna go fish BC. I bought my Canadian license, so I have an annual license. Good for everything except for halibut, which you have to buy uh, in BC, apparently. There's a, a limited salmon window right now, uh, May 1st through May 31st in BC. And uh, I'm here at Stewart Island, so I'm literally seven miles from fishing ground. So I really need to go give this a shot. This is kind of a rare opportunity for us Americans to be able to go and fish this time of year since everything's typically closed. So I am gonna go fish Canadian waters. Uh, I did have to fill out a special form with WDFW to notify them that I am fishing in Canadian waters. I do have my passport with me just in case I need to go to land for whatever reason. Uh, so I'm prepared. I'm super excited. Look at these kayakers. That'd be a fun trip. Just a kayak to and from. I think they go to and from Roche Harbor. And then they come to Stewart Island over here and uh, camp out at, at one of the campsites. One of the boat-in campsites is really fun. We are fast approaching that border, the imaginary border in the middle of the water there. Uh, this red dotted line on my chart will tell me that I am in Canada. Woo! That's pretty exciting. Literally only took me 10 minutes out of Stewart Island. It's right, right here. We're sitting right on the border, so, and I'm only 12 miles from the fishing ground, so let's go see if we can put one in the box. That would just make day three epic. You doing, Ribby? That's, we're going to BC. Is that okay? It's official. We are in Canadian waters. All right, we made a quick stop here, uh, right on this spit. Uh, there's several boats right here. It looks like they're fishing. So I may drop gear down and just troll around here and give it a pass and see what happens. So, uh, there's not much bait in this area, so I may just, just have a quick one. We'll see. So on the main rod, I'm using my favorite setup, which is a Pro Troll lighted flasher with a kitchen sink silver horde three and a half inch spoon. This setup is absolutely deadly. And then for the second rod, I like to mix things up, and I usually put a hoochie on the other side just so I've got a nice variety of lures. I pair that hoochie with a Gibbs Red Racer Highliner Flasher. It's one of my go-to's in the sound, and it usually works. One rod, two rods. This is the beauty of fishing Canadian waters. You can fish two rods. That's pretty rad. So I've got two rods at two different depths. Uh, I have no idea where to fish for these guys as far as depth right now, so I'm going suspended. Yep, yeah, looking for that big one. We'll see if we get a, a nice keeper here. That'd be sweet. Coming up on some kelp right here, so I gotta be aware. I'm gonna hang a left here. But uh, yeah, fishing uh, James Spit. Looking for a big hatchery Chinook salmon. We'll see if we can find it. Oh, there's some serious bait. Uh, probably not. Oh. 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 Well, that sucks. Just hung up on something. What the heck was that? That was bizarre. In a crab pot or something. Uh, what is that? It does not want to come up. Uh, there it is. Freed up at least. I'm off the clip. Get my salmon gear back. Yep, I'll get my salmon gear back. Damn downer, your ball's gone though. That's a bummer. I don't know what the heck that was. A crab pot or a, you know, something dropped over. 
longer. Probably an old crap pot. Don't fish bottom around here. Fish suspended. That's why you'll lose balls. So I lost a downrigger ball back there. Unfortunately, I got snagged on a what looked like a shrimp pot. It's just the reality of fishing in certain zones. Sometimes you have rocky bottom, sometimes you have littered bottom with pots and uh, debris and downrigger balls can get hung up around some of that gear. And it's an unfortunate truth about fishing uh, anywhere in particular, especially rocky areas, but it doesn't feel good to leave gear in the water. It really doesn't. It's not something that fishermen are proud of, I can tell you that. And uh, I wish there was a, a more eco-friendly alternative for downrigger balls. I think if there was, it would be a great business opportunity. So if anybody has any ideas, drop them in the comments. I'm, I'm curious what everyone thinks. Oh yeah, there's one, baby. There's a fish, woo! -hoo! Unfortunately, it's kind of how it goes with barbless hooks. <laughs> a couple head shakes and that thing popped off. It felt heavy, it was definitely keeper size. Who knows if it was wild or not. You can only keep hatchery right now, so. That was absolutely epic. We got bit, we lost a nice one, and then this one bit while I was turning and had my gear up. Absolutely unexpected bite, but happened on the turn here at James Spit. Awesome place to fish. Really, really enjoyed it. This sucker is about 26 inches, so not a huge fish, but a fish nonetheless, and uh, one that I get to keep from the Canadian side that I normally can't do on the American side. Look at this Cromer. Just a stunner, eh? Look at that. And nice hatchery fish, fin clamped. Not huge, but you know what? I am super grateful for this opportunity because normally we don't get to fish salmon in May and uh, this is real special. So, very happy. There it is, my king. Day three, success.